welcome to another week of Radiant Kids TV. I'm in a special room in the church right now. Can you guess which one it is? Do you guys remember this room? Maybe if I tilt this up just a little bit, you'll see the tree. I'm sitting in the same place, the same place where we used to have story time before all this COVID stuff happened. I thought this would be a fun place to come and tell you about our story today. So I hope you enjoy. We've got experiments with a purpose. As always, we've got a birthday. We've got a couple songs from a few weeks ago that you guys can sing along with again. So stay tuned because here we go. Good morning, writing kids. Today we have two special guests, Jack and Ivy. Hi. Hi. Get up on your feet and start singing with us. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cries. He lifted me out of the slimy pit. Out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on the rock.
there's a few different Johns in the Bible. There's uh, John the Disciple. There's also John the Baptist. Another way to say his name is John the Baptizer. So he is the one who came to prepare the way for Jesus and to baptize people and was telling them to turn away from their sins and to turn to Jesus. And he also baptized Jesus. So that's who our story is about today. And that he, John, told people to follow Jesus. Now, do you remember our big picture question? Why did Jesus become human? Do you remember the answer? Jesus became human to rescue sinners. That's me and that's you. The Bible is the most important book there is because the Bible is God's word. The Bible is true and tells us about Jesus. The Bible story today is in John chapters one and chapter three, and also in the book of Matthew. Now, like I said, a few weeks back, we learned that Jesus obeyed God by being baptized. God announced his love for Jesus and the Holy Spirit landed on Jesus like a dove. Then the Holy Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness where Satan tried to trick Jesus and make him sin. Jesus was tempted and never sinned. He remained perfect and able to be the perfect sacrifice for us. So today we will learn about what John the Baptist taught about Jesus once Jesus began traveling around teaching, healing, and baptizing people. Let's watch that together. Jesus and his disciples went out into the countryside. People came to see them and Jesus taught the people. Many people were baptized. Nearby, John the Baptist was baptizing people too. Some of the people who followed John got into an argument. They went to John. Teacher, they said, remember the man you talked about, the one who was with you on the other side of the Jordan River? His disciples are baptizing people and people are starting to follow him. John's followers were talking about Jesus. John answered them, you heard me say, that I am not the Messiah. I am the messenger who goes before him to announce that he is coming. This was true. John had said, someone greater than me is coming. I am not worthy to remove his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John tried to explain by talking about a wedding. When two people get married, the man who marries the bride is the groom. His friend stands with him at the wedding, and he is happy to be there and hear the groom's voice. John also knew that a wedding is the groom's special day. The groom's friend should not make it about himself. This was how John felt, like a groom's friend, because he was happy that Jesus, the Messiah, had come. John said, Jesus must increase, but I must decrease. Then John explained why Jesus was more important than himself. John was from the earth and he could only talk about things on earth. Jesus, the one who comes from heaven, talked about things in heaven because he had seen them. Still, no one believed what Jesus said. Whoever believes Jesus knows that God tells the truth. God sent Jesus to earth and Jesus speaks God's words. The Father loves the Son and has given him power over everything. Whoever believes in the Son will have eternal life, but whoever refuses to believe in the Son will not have eternal life. He will never be able to get away from God's judgment. John the Baptist told people to get ready for Jesus, the promised Messiah. Now that Jesus was on earth, John's mission was complete. Jesus was greater than John, and John joyfully stepped aside as Jesus began his earthly ministry. So John the baptizer wanted everyone to glorify Jesus or to make Jesus the center of their lives. That's why John told people to follow Jesus and pointed to him. 
in our own lives, we can increase Jesus' glory, or another way to say that would be to make much of him or to make him famous to everyone around us by loving Jesus, by obeying him, and by loving others. Do you remember our key passage? It's from John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, I must decrease. When we love and trust Jesus, we will want to obey and glorify him above all things. It's a way of saying that he, acknowledging that he is greater than us and that we love him and we want to serve him by serving those around us. Now, I really loved how John said in that story, he talked about being the bridegroom. I have a special picture to show you. This is from 16 years ago. This is Pastor Gordon and I on our wedding day. So in this situation, he was the bridegroom, I was the bride. And we each had a friend that came up and stood at the front with us as we said our vows to each other. And his friend was named Colin. Now, during our wedding, wouldn't it have been weird if Colin stopped everything and said, I just feel like people are not really paying enough attention to me right now. No one has said congratulations to me. Um, no one is making much of me today. And I feel very, very sad about that. People would have looked at him like, uh, it is not your day. You are not the bridegroom here. Gord is the bridegroom. And so we're here to celebrate him and Rihanna and to make much of them because this is the day that they are getting married, right? So another situation would be when Pastor Gord got his master's degree. This is him and one of his friends at school on the day that he graduated with his master's. And again, this would have been a situation where if this friend had said, I am just really not feeling appreciated today because Gord is the one being celebrated and no one has said congratulations to me. No one has shaken my hand. This just is not fair. People are not paying enough attention to me today. People would look at him like he was crazy and say, it's not your day today. This is, again, this is Gord's day because he's worked really hard to do this. So just that, those are the examples that John the baptizer was giving in that situation, that he was not there to be made much of. People were thinking that maybe he was gonna be upset and jealous that now that Jesus was here, that they were gonna be making much of Jesus instead of John. And John showed the humility in his heart when he said, oh no, this is the right way for things to be happening right now. People should be giving much attention to Jesus and should be following Jesus. I am just the friends in those situations that are here to point everyone to him, to Jesus, and to say, no, he is the one. He's the one you need to follow. He's the one you need to trust your life to and give up everything for. He's worth it. So I'd love for you to have a chat with your family sometime this week about ways that you can bring attention to Jesus. Just different ways that you can do that, either within your family. I know right now it's hard because that's basically um, the only people that we can be around other than at school. But I would love to hear some of your thoughts that you guys come up with uh, in regards to that. So what are ways that you can glorify God? You can glorify Jesus and make much of him this week. Why don't we pray together? Father, help us show the same humility that John showed. Help us understand that Jesus is the only one who deserves glory. Give us opportunities to celebrate and obey him. We ask you to decrease our pride and increase Jesus' glory through our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. everyone, welcome back to another episode of Experiments with a Purpose. Now today, we are going to be talking about density. And density is the ability or the compactness of a substance like water or air or wood or a piece of metal or an axe. Now I'll, I'll talk about why we talk about an axe later. Now. Can you think of a verse or story in the Bible about density? It's pretty hard, right? 
Well, I've been searching for the last couple of weeks, and I found one in 2 Kings chapter 6. Let me read it for you. The sons of the prophet said to Elisha, Please notice that the place where we live under your supervision is too small for us. Please let us go to the Jordan where we can each get a log and can build ourselves a place to live there. Go, Elisha said. Then one said, Please come with your servants. I'll come, he answered. So he went with them, and when they came to the Jordan, they cut down trees. As one of them was cutting down a tree, the iron axe head fell into the water, and he cried out, Oh, my master, it was borrowed. It wasn't mine. Then Elisha asked, Where did it fall? When he showed him the place, Elisha cut a piece of wood, threw it in there, and made the iron float. Then he said, Pick it up. So he reached out and took it. Now that is a miracle. And this is what an axe looks like. And this is what the axe head in the story is. It's, it's a big piece of metal that you can use to cut down things with, trees. And because it's so dense, it never, it never uh, bends or it never um, becomes not sharp because it's way more dense than wood or water. And that's why when the axe head fell into the water, it sank all the way to the bottom. And the miracle of the story is that Elisha, by throwing a piece of wood in the water, something that's less dense than the water, he made the axe head become less dense than the water. Now, we're going to do that today. We're not going to do exactly that because we can't make an axe or a metal become less dense than water. Now, that is quite the miracle. But something I can do today is show you how to make the water more dense. Now, here I have two cups of water. And I have a regular egg. Now, this is not a trick egg. This is not a fake egg. It's just a normal egg. It's not boiled. It just came from the fridge, and we're just going to be using it for this experiment. And what I'm going to do is take an egg, and an egg is actually almost as dense as water, almost as dense as water, okay? And when we put it into the water, what do you think? So just like the axe head, the egg is denser than the water. So what do you think is going to happen? Let's see. It's going to float or fall. It's going to fall. It's going to sink into the water because it's denser. Now let's take it out. And here we have another cup of water. Now, just like this last one, same egg. Let's see what happens when we put it into this cup of water. Ah, check out what happened. Did it sink or did it float? The egg here actually floats in the water. Now, that's not a miracle. I want to show you how I did it. And you can do this at home too. And I'm going to get my special assistant, Chloe, thank you, Chloe, to give me a box of salt. Now, Salt is made of sodium chloride, dextrose, potassium iodide, sodium bicarbonate, yellow prussiate of soda. I have no idea what that means. But we know that when we take the salt and we pour it into the water, what we can then do, if, if you notice it's all white, but if you stir it, the water becomes really milky, it becomes really white, but if you keep stirring it, what you'll start to notice is that it'll become transparent like water again, okay? Now, you actually need a lot of salt in order to make the water denser than the egg. So you probably need about half a cup of salt, of, of table salt, into this amount of water, like a tall glass of water. And what you do is you keep stirring, and if you notice, the water is starting to be more transparent now, which means that the particles are becoming dissolved in the water. 
changing the density of the water. And what you'll find is eventually, when, you, when it's all stirred up, when it's nice and clear, you put an egg in there and it will float. Now, just in case you thought this is a trick egg, I'll get another egg. This is another egg straight from the fridge. And by dropping it into the water, it will float. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's experiment and I'll see you next time on Experiments with a Purpose. Bye-bye. We do have one birthday this week and it is Clara Marsh. Clara is turning two already. We hope you have a fantastic birthday. Happy birthday, Clara. I'm so glad that you've been here to watch with me this week and to listen as John told people to follow Jesus. A couple of quick reminders for you. Your boxes need to be, your shoe boxes need to be into the church by today. So I hope you had a chance to get those in here. And I would love for you guys to memorize this month's verse. Again, that's John chapter 3, verse 30. He must increase, I must decrease. You can always send me a video of that to kids at mtnview.org. And if you send it in by Thursday at noon, we can all watch it together next week. So I hope you guys all have a fantastic week and we will see you next time on Radiant Kids TV. Bye-bye.